Thanks for watching another short video from Go Engineer. My name is Bruce Schaller, and this short video is going to be on creating a couple intake manifolds for the turbos on this C10 1965 classic pickup. After the video is finished, you should be able to click the link at the bottom and download the files for using them yourself if you'd like. So before jumping into the part, let's take a look at how my friend at his fab shop has been doing this in the past. He's always been creating patterns to create the parts for this and then wrapping fiberglass around his patterns. Before he creates a foam pattern, he'll start with generally a, a fitting template. It's a wooden template that's defining the rectangular opening in the hood to the round part of the turbo. And from there, he get started on the foam. Now in this case, the foam piece took about seven hours and he realized it's not gonna be a, you know, symmetric version. It's gonna be a left and right hand version. So I talked to him about doing it for him as, as a project and printing it and using the CAD file to mirror it and the print file to check for fit and, and even the print file for a final print for painting and using it. So from there, we can get into SOLIDWORKS and take a look. So let's jump in and take a look at the model. In general, it's a pretty simple lofted surface model. If we were to look on the hood of the car, there's going to be an intake that's somewhat rectangular. And here on this shape, we really did capture the shape of the car's intake since it was really made by hand they are slight arcs. They weren't straight. So we really had to pick up some of that detail and also make it for the mean dimensions. So when I use this for the other side of the car, it works there as well. So, and we had some clearances for some of the silicone that's going to go in between and help isolate the uh, unit from the vibration in the vehicle. So it really starts with a rectangle and that rectangle has been, you know, lofted to a circle but there are some pretty neat things about this one you know and of course the circle is just offset from a distance down and over before getting started that was where the single line pattern or the parting line pattern that you saw the wooden pattern that was started off with is what I used to really get started with so from there we really went into the loft and if you look the loft in itself is a loft with some guide curves. So what I really want to focus in on are the guide curves and how the guide curves were made for this particular one. So if we looked and we expanded out the sketch for the guide curves, it's all done in one sketch, although they are multiple guide curves. These guide curves are just inserted 3D sketches that are splines and the splines happen to be tangent to these lines that I've made that are perpendicular to the ends or the rectangle and the circle. So all the splines are really just carrying tangent ends on them. So they're pretty much self-defined through tangent C and geometry automatically in there. Now you could nudge the curvatures in the, there and such, but I've left it default for this one. And then from there, you can kind of see what, what I've done is just really thicken the part and go in and do some traditional filleting on the part and put some additional bosses on there for mounting it because this is going to be a hood mounted intake where when they shut the hood down, as you've seen in the picture, you, you know, you're going to shut it down and it's going to fit perfectly. And that's the idea. So some of the other things I did is because of the print, the printer, I should say, can only print a part so big, I did have to cut it in half. So I swept a rib on the inside of the part in there. And I've done some couple other unique things besides just sweeping the rib. I wanted to, you know, go ahead and put some dowel pins, so to speak, along the ribbing. So... What I've done here is I've gone in 
and I've done some top-down design inside of this tool. So first thing you're going to notice is, you know, it is an opposite hand version, so I just can't use one part for each side. If I flip this one part over, then it'd have to have an intake up here for the turbo. So mirroring this gives me my whole second print, which is the beautiful thing about the CAD. But in addition to that, if I just went in and hid the tabs and some of this, I did do some top-down design inside the assembly where I, I channeled this and went ahead and put the, the dowels in so I get a nice uh, fit and some alignment pins put in automatically for when we glue this together. I wish I did it on a bigger printer, but we did have to go that extra step to put that in. So I've left it in the model and wanted to show it to you. So that's really it for the, from the model standpoint. Pretty simple model. Anybody could kind of go make it from just doing some offsets with a rectangle and a circle and then doing some 3D sketches. So I, I hope you've liked the model and that you can see that if you needed to make something like this, that it'd be easy to do in SolidWorks too. So this was such a fun project to compare the new CAD technology married with 3D printing to, you know, the older pattern making technology and the time that it took the older way versus the newer way. I was really able to state that after the pattern maker started uh, and created that first pattern that the turbo changed position slightly and that whole pattern and any parts he made by hand which would have been more into 30, 40 hours, uh, would have had to been scrapped. I had about two and a half, three hours into the model. Our test print showed that the turbocharger tank changed in position. And from there, we, you know, changed the CAD model in about five, 10 minutes and went and printed a couple, painted them and uh, had our parts. So a uh, big comparison, probably, you know, I'd say 10 hours and an another, uh, $1,800 in painting and uh, probably about $1,800 in print parts. So there you have it. Uh, that's about it. Thanks for watching another short video from Go Engineer.